Hey guys, it's Merce. Welcome back to Harpies in the Trees, where I review horror books with a supernatural focus. Today I will be wearing my book haul things, I guess. <laughs> I just wanted to wear them and I actually sent out like a little story, like a question on stories, like should I wear my things today? I kind of forgot that I have a hard time talking in things. <laughs> A lot of people were like, yeah, go for it. So I was very happy. I mean, I figured that, you know, if you're following me, you might like to see things. So let's just pretend that I'm Krampus's uh, great, great, great niece. And, uh, and I'm here to talk to you about some books that I got in the last couple of months. But first, let's do some message shout outs and then we'll get to that. These comments come from my last video, which was for a tag that was created by Marie McWilliams. Um, it's called The Dilemmas of a Horror Nerd. And I really liked doing this tag because it was actually pretty challenging. The questions about why you like horror and just people pressuring you to, you know, maybe switch to cheery stuff uh, is something that I've experienced most of my life. So this tag was really exciting to do to just talk about that stuff. Mark O'Grady Marshall says, it's in our biology to get scared by stuff and have that physiological reaction. Horror stories do that, but without any actual danger to you. And absolutely, it's it's a risk, but you know, the, there's very little consequence, like maybe a nightmare or two, but it's, it's there to protect you, I think. Uh, horror is definitely something that wants to warn you because all of the horror movies are always about people not paying attention or not seeing the signs or you know something like that, taking risks without really being aware of the risks that they're taking, getting into things that they're not supposed to be getting into, you know? So it's, it's they're, they're things I think to help us be safer. So I totally agree with that. I tried to say this name before and they told me that it was completely wrong. Um, so I will try again, but uh, Deep Tenjan Sarma Perkayasta. I tried to say it a little differently this time, um, but they make a good point. They say the unknown is frightening. But when presented through fiction, it can be addictive in its own way. There are certain people who are just attracted to the mystery, the darkness, the unknown, you know, like I'm one of those people, you might be one of those people. And it, it's just, it's not really morbid. It's, <sighs> I'm not sure what it is, um, but it's, it's definitely an addictive thing. Like I keep hunting for that creepiness, that spookiness, all through my life. Uzi Suicide 666 says, I love horror because it's not something you can just scratch the surface and have it reveal itself. It's limitless in its scope and willing to go anywhere it needs to go to communicate its concepts and ideas. Yes, absolutely. The layers it can go are very, very deep. And with anything that affects us viscerally, you know that there may be an origin for that. And that really speaks to you as a person. So like, I know that there are certain things that I see or I watch in horror and they have a profound effect on me. And sometimes I know why they're affecting me in a visceral way or they're making me feel uncomfortable. Like sometimes I know, and then other times I don't. I mean, it's not that horror is always deep and interesting. <laughs> it can just definitely be just for fun too, and just be, you know, um, playful and whatever. And that's totally cool too. Thank you guys so much for your comments, especially on that video, because I know that it struck a chord with most of you, most of you having to defend the reason why you love horror, defend why you like dark things or uh, any part of yourself that just seemed, that just seemed like maybe not, mainstream enough for other people. Um, so that was interesting to read. It's definitely something we all share as horror lovers. So now let's get into this mini book haul of mine. It's not many books. I have some other books coming that I'm really, really excited about, but they haven't arrived as of yet. Um, my abominable book box was 
completely thwarted by the German post. <laughs> um, but those guys are so nice and they sent me another box. But I realized that I had like a little mini stack of just new stuff I got in. So that's what I wanna talk about. So I totally forgot that I was gonna make a pun for this video. And one of the things that I kind of have a talent for <laughs> is puns. These books won't drain you, but I will. <laughs> oh, it works on so many levels. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. But I did promise I would do one and uh, yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and start off with the book that I'm actually reading at the moment. Um, and I haven't finished. I have, I will be honest, I have not been in a very readerly mood as of late. I, I don't know why that is. <laughs> I just haven't. Um, so this book is not that long and I should have finished it in like a couple days, but anyway. It is a book by Claire McNally. It is Come Down Into Darkness. And I'm almost done though, like right to here. So Come Down Into the Darkness is a supernatural story and I will read the back for you. The house had been empty for 20 years. There were dark stories of murder and suicide told about it, but it was just what Doreen Addison was looking for, big inexpensive and secluded. It was perfect for her child refuge. At first, it was just a crazy man in the woods and a dead cat on the back porch. But then the children started seeing and hearing a beautiful woman dressed in black and there was a terrible accident in the cellar. Something wasn't right about this house. And then the nightmare really started as children disappeared and Doreen found herself confronting an evil power beyond her understanding, only one thing could save her and the children from destruction. She must discover the secret of the woman in black who commands them all to come down into darkness. This is also a vintage book. Uh, it was printed in 1988. This edition was printed in 1989 and I'm enjoying it so far, but I have a review coming for it next week, so I will talk about it. The next book I have is also a vintage book. It is called Unto the Altar. I love the cover. It's just so creepy. <laughs> it's, it's like this marble face, but it has eyes. It's very unsettling. Um, this was printed in 1985. Young, innocent, and damned, she had come to the remote island to recover from the shock of her parents' violent death. The other guests at Revillon Manor welcomed her with open arms, eager to make her feel at home, perhaps too eager. Adriana began to think. Overwhelmed by their solicitude, she sensed a mysterious purpose behind the ministrations of her incredibly attractive companions, all of whom seemed to have discovered the secret of eternal youth and beauty. And when Adriana found out the horrifying truth, there was nowhere to run, nowhere to turn to, no way to save her immortal soul. <laughs> My feeling about this, I mean, I, I basically pick this up based on the cover alone. I, uh, sometimes that will happen to me where I'm kind of like, well, if I don't like it, but I love the cover, it'll be totally worth it, you know? Um, but my sense is uh, a young woman gets dragged into a some kind of like youth cult or something, and, and she's just the material they're looking for to keep, uh, I guess, their skin looking really good. Who knows? <laughs> The next book I have is a anthology, and it is the Local Haunts Anthology. And I wanted to pick this up because I am friends with a handful of the writers who are in here, like Regina St. Clair, uh, Bookish Marie, um, Lydia Peeper. I think Cameron Cheney is also in here. So if you watch horror booktubers at all, you will at least know one of the authors in here. So it sounds really interesting. It's 19 stories that are based on the location where the author lives or maybe is from, and they have created a story around something 
uh, in their area, which to me is really cool because I'm kind of hoping that it's a lot of like based on real, like real locations, you know, like, yeah, there's this mine shaft in our town that everyone said was haunted. And, you know, I wrote a story about it that I would really love that a lot. So there's some really awesome titles here for these stories. Uh, the Salt Hag, love that. Crowthorn, that's definitely like right up my alley. It's like a, it just makes me think of like a haunted manor or something. The Blocked Cellar, mm-hmm. The Room Within, sounds really good. I, I like things with rooms and doors and basements and attics. It's everything I love. Darkness Descends. So I'll do this all the time if it's collections or an anthology where I will just go through the titles <laughs> and then just choose based on that. And I kind of like that. I think it's, I don't know, it's really fun. It feels a little bit more like you're kind of choosing your adventure there. So also, I know that they reached a number one bestseller in Australia and I believe Canada, which is just really amazing. That is so cool. So you should definitely pick it up. I think you can download it also as an ebook. The next book that I picked up is actually a magazine. It's called The Occult Detective. And the way that I ran across this was the editor, Dave Bresky. We started talking in the comments. And so he, he told me that he um, edited this magazine that I might like. And it's really cool. It, it's like a bunch of stories. There are a few nonfiction stories in here as well, but I think it's all threaded with the supernatural. There's also some artwork in here and there's reviews of um, films and books. And yeah, you can see some artwork here, which is really pretty. There are also other issues of this. Um, I just picked this one up because I liked the artwork of the cat in the hallway. It's really kind of a mood. So a cult magazine, you can pick it up um, on Amazon. The next book I have is How to Make a Monster by Felix DeMauro. I definitely wanted to read something by this author. Uh, I've seen a lot of his um, books on Instagram and read a lot of the reviews. So I definitely wanted to check it out. Um, so I got this one. I just kind of liked the name, How to Make a Monster. And this is also a short story collection. And this also has, you know, artwork kind of dotted within the pages as well. Let's read the back. One drink and one drug too many while on the job results in an unfortunate accident for a young woman with a once promising future. She finds herself having to confront the demons of her past head on, perhaps more literally than she would have hoped. The last thing Freedom expects after telling his two best friends that he plans to propose to his girlfriend is to hear the word no. Not from her, but from them. The problem? The men he hopes to make his groomsmen are about to tell him exactly what his wife-to-be would like best on their wedding night. Hmm. Bullied at school, beaten at home, a young man finds himself in a position where something has got to give. Unfortunately, perhaps not for him. What may give is his sanity. How to Make a Monster is an anthology of psychological torment that explores the thin line between humanity and monstrosity living inside us all. Containing eight stories, How to Make a Monster details how one wrong turn, one ill-timed hello, a goodbye that was planned too late. How any step we take can lead us down the path to monstrosity. With that in mind, please don't judge the souls you will encounter between these pages too harshly. We never really know which side of the line between humanity and monstrosity we are truly on. So I have a feeling that this is going to be a challenging read in many aspects, but worth the journey, I think. The next book I got, uh, I received in the Creepy Crate, and it's a true crime novel. It's called We Keep the Dead Close by Becky Cooper. I really like the way that it feels. It's one of those books that kind of just like opens up on its own, stays open. 
It has like a, I don't know what you would call it, like a weak spine, I guess. I don't know, but it feels really nice and has this really nice kind of like uh, newspaper quality to the paper. And I like some of the uh, images they have in here. So let me read to you what this is about. In 1969, the height of the counterculture, the year Harvard would begin the tumultuous process of merging with sister school Radcliffe, and the year that Jane Brighton, an ambitious graduate student in Harvard's, anthro in Harvard's anthropology department, would be found bludgeoned to death in her apartment. Forty years later, Becky Cooper, a curious undergrad, will first hear whispers of the story. The body was nameless. A student had an affair with her professor, and he murdered her in the Peabody Museum. Though this rumor would prove false, it started an investigation that would consume Cooper's life for the next 10 years. We keep the dead close as a narrative of mirrors, misogyny, and murder. It is at once a rumination on the violence and oppression that rules our revered institutions, a ghost story reflecting one young woman's past into another's present, and a love story for a girl who was lost to history. It sounds really sad and I have a huge soft spot for people who are just so, I wouldn't say like easily covered up, you know, but just so callously, uh, you know, kicked under the bed and just like forgotten about. And it's strange when um, someone comes along, usually a stranger, and they were able to find this person, um, through such complex labyrinths of deception and all that kind of stuff. And it's just so amazing. So the last book I have is a, an ARC request, which I'm not doing ARCs anymore because it just got to be too much. <laughs> um, but this author is a local author who lives in Berlin and also writes in English. So I was like really excited because I never ever get to have a local author. <laughs> um, so this is a YA, I thought it was a graphic novel, but it's a, it's a YA supernatural uh, story. And it's called The Dark Book of Gwena Luna. And the author's name is Gunter Primig. It has artwork on the inside like this. Um, has like, you know, one per story, has that sort of like, um, um, kind of carved stamp, sort of engraved looking style. It's really nice. It says there's a lot of horrible things to be afraid of. I want to stop something. I want to save someone. I want to know I did some good. Have a use. I want to say to myself just once, bam, good witch. <laughs> Gwena Luna is 17 and on the run, and she dreams of strange things. A child eating giant who lives in the woods, ghosts haunting a laboratory, a valley of the undead, a magical book, and Jack the Ripper's escape from hell. Why did Gwena Luna seek out the help of a jaded psychiatrist to unravel these dreams? And is it wise to listen to a girl who just may be a witch? <laughs> and that's the dark book of Gwena Luna. Thank you so much to Gunther Primig for sending this over to me. I appreciate it. So these were the books that I acquired in the last couple of months. Maybe there's something interesting there for you, um, I hope. Thank you so much for spending your evening with me. I really do appreciate it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. That helps me out a lot. Thank you so much to the Blood Crowd Initiates for supporting me and this channel. It means so much to me. Like, I know I say that in every video, but I definitely mean it from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. If you'd like to support this channel, um, please sign up for the Patreon. The link is in the description below if you would like to do that. If you want to follow me on Instagram, I'm there at Harpies in the Trees. And I got a TikTok, guys. <laughs> I don't really know how to use it, but I got it. <laughs> if you want to follow me there, it's sadthings underscore x, and I will follow you back.
Please take care of yourselves, wear a mask, and watch out for each other. I will talk to you next time.